welcome to the Banditi Rum section. Um, <clears throat> so firstly, I'm Eleanor. Um, I am part of the marketing team at Glasgow Distillery, which is where we age and spice Banditi Club. Um, I kind of head up the social media and the PR side of things, so I come from a bit of a different area. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm Alex. I created the recipe for <coughs> Banditi. And I'm a distiller at Glasgow Distillery. <clears throat> So I guess in terms of, I think you've all had quite a lot of rum at the moment, if I'm right. So um, we do want to try some banditi. We think because I'm going to talk about banditi in terms of why we did it at Glasgow Distillery and maybe a bit about the brand. And then Alex will go on to the production side of things and how we age and spice it. So I think it makes most sense to talk about, um, I guess, the ingredients and the tasting notes when Alex takes over in terms of production, which might be in about 10 minutes time. So if you want to pour your banditi club, um, it, it's really, really good with ginger beer. So if you've got some ginger beer, um, just pour yourself a long glass ginger beer, a wedge of lime, um, and you can sip on that throughout the time that we're talking. And then hopefully you can create your own opinions. And then when it comes to Alex talking about the aging and spicing, then you'd maybe be able to figure out some of, this, some of the spices and what's involved in there. So I hope that's all right, that you can just sip throughout and at the end, we'll have a bit of a tasting. It smells like, someone said it smells like Christmas. <laughs> yeah, we get that quite a lot. Um, yeah, it's a great Christmas drink, but um, yeah, so I guess I'll just start with a bit about Glasgow Distillery. So we were founded in 2014. We are an independent distillery um, with three co-founders based out in the luxurious uh, Hillington Industrial Estate, uh, close to the airport. Um, and we have, we're predominantly a single malt distillery, but we have lots of different products. So we have uh, three single malts, we have five different gins, luxurious uh, Hillington Industrial Estate, uh, close to the airport. Um, and we are an independent distillery um, with three co-founders based out in the luxurious uh, Hillington Industrial Estate, uh, close to the airport. Um, and we have, we're predominantly a single malt distillery, but we have lots of different products. So we have uh, three single malts, we have five different gins, we have two vodkas, and we recently brought out a blended malt. That's a good thing, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, lots of different things going on over the last, I guess, even in the last two years, DT Club Rum, G52 Vodka, and our most recent blended malt came out. Um, so that's a crazy amount. There's about 24 of us in the distillery between marketing, sales, production, so... Uh, fairly sizable but still quite small in the grand scheme of things so yeah based in Hillington do lots of different products and um, our ranges are macro gin range if you've heard of that 1770 single malt and um, we've got obviously Banditi Club rum we've got G52 vodka and we've got malt riot blended malt scotch whiskey <coughs> so um, so yeah, I think Justine has a presentation to bring up. Yeah, there we go. So I guess just to get onto Banditi, that's why we're all here. Um, so I guess with Glasgow Distillery, a lot of our products are named after something to do with Glasgow. So 1770 Single Malt is after the original Glasgow Distillery was founded in the year 1770. Um, malt Riot was after the, the Malt Riot malt riots of seven, the late 1700s, where um, basically the government wanted to put tax on malts and Glaswegians kind of rose up in, in opposition and that didn't happen. And again, Banditi Club's kind of similar to other brands. We, we like the stories, the history of Glasgow, and so we try and bring that into all the brands. So the Banditi Club in particular were basically just mischievous groups of friends that went around Glasgow causing a bit of havoc, to be honest. Uh, they used to drum, drink, excuse me, drink uh, rum punches in the local public houses. They used to ride on horses throughout Glasgow and do kind of silly things like knock over the police boxes that the city is really famous for and just cause a bit of trouble. So the brand story, it's it's true. Um, they were quite well known back in the back in the late 1700s and the 1800s, but sorry, the late 18th and 19th century. I'm getting confused with my brands here. Um, and yeah, so I think that kind of performed, that that makes way for all the branding. So I know you guys don't have the bottle, but the bottle has basically what the branding is behind us. And it's uh, just showcasing kind of the, the cheeky, mischievous, um, almost devilish, if you like, um, Banditi Club. Um, and it's just a great story. It goes really well for Banditi branding. Um, and 
yeah, it's, it's hard. I'm seeing the comments on the side as well. Um, so I think the next slide, Jacine. Again, we, we work with like local uh, producers, we work with local marketing and design agencies um, in Glasgow. In, in particular, we work with a company called Stand. We're really, we are really passionate about Glasgow and it makes sense to use the talent kind of around about us rather than source it from elsewhere. So I think you'll agree that the Bantiti branding is pretty cool. We've actually got an offer on where you get a free t-shirt, which is what Alex and I are wearing and you get 10% um, off a bottle of Banditi, which is normally £25, so quite good value for money there. Um, oh, there it is, it's popped up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess I think the other thing that I maybe not mentioned is why why rum and Glasgow Distillery, as I say, was predominantly meant to be a single malt distillery. It's independently owned and one of the co-founders, um, his passion is gin, the other one's passion is whiskey, and we have another co-founder who's passionate about all the other kind of products. So. Um, they always envisioned bringing about a distillery that was going to have multiple brands and multiple different spirits. Um, but then I guess also Glasgow Distilleries attracted quite a young crowd. So all the distillers for however many years since the beginning have all been under 35 and they all kind of get their own projects to work on. Hence, Banditi was Alex's project. And, <coughs> excuse me, G52 Vodka was um, our colleague Tom's project. So... It just makes sense as an independent distillery because we can do that to give some creative license to the people that are really being creative and know a lot about the spirits. So that's a bit of a background, I guess, to the brand, why it's called what it's called, why we're doing it. Obviously, the, the rum market is growing. I think a year and a half ago, it was maybe <coughs> supposed to be up and coming as much as the gin market kind of boomed and reached its peak. I'm not sure we've seen that yet with rum, but hopefully in the future. So... And um, we did want to be a bit a bit ahead there. So I guess just a mixture of our founders' passions, the fact that we have a great team and the fact that rum is really kind of coming of age now. So yeah, they're all the kind of reasons why we did it. I think I'm gonna pass on to Alex to just chat a bit about production and the aging and the spicing of things. Um and yeah, here you go. Okay, so um with the production sides. We, we really want to make an agricole rum. Um, sugarcane isn't really known for growing in Hillington. So we had to outsource really. So we had a collaboration with a distillery in Southwest Madeira. Uh, they harvest their own sugarcane, um, squeeze out the juices, and they then ferment for 24 hours. Uh, this is then distilled in a, co a copper column continuous still. Uh, which has eight rectification plates. Uh, this is then transported to a series of stainless steel tanks. And basically these guys send us a sample of every single tank they have. And it's up to me and one of our co-founders to do a sensory analysis of all of those samples. And basically then we will ascertain which samples we want. They basically send the rum to Glasgow Distillery. Uh, we then fill American version oak casks at 60% with the rum, and we do that for 12 months. So in that 12 months, we'll keep a close eye on how it's getting on, especially towards the end. Um, and we will try and see at the 10, 10, 11, 12 months part if we're getting the color and the spices we want from the cask. So from the cask, you get a lot of vanilla flavors, a lot of caramel from the char. Uh, you get a little bit of spice as well. So once we're happy with that, we will um, spice the batch. So for the recipe, in my mind, I had a, an idea of making it quite a tropical rum, but with also things that make it a bit more full-bodied and a bit complex. So uh, we have pineapple and orange, for example, uh, ginger uh, for the fruits. And we, for the spices, uh, we tried out about 20, 30 botanicals at the beginning, actually macerating in bottles and trialing and trialing botanicals together to see how they work out together. And uh, we have uh, cacao nibs in there, which adds a really good color um, and a bit of a bitterness, like a dark chocolate um, as well. And general allspice black mm. peppercorn, which mm. isn't prevalent in pretty much every spice rum around. So this took about eight or nine months of trialing every every single botanical you can think of um and then creating the 
recipe from that. So this, the process for the spicing is we decant, depending on how many casks we're, how big a batch we're making, uh, decant the cask into a container. We will then, uh, I'll spend about four hours cutting up fruit and uh, crushing up spices uh, with the grinder. And that will be added to the container. And this will be vigorously stirred every day for between seven and 10 days. So depending on the season in the summer, seven days is often enough for the maceration, for the interaction of the alcohol with the fruits. Um, in winter, that can take a bit longer. So it could be maybe 10 days. So I'll, I'll be taking samples pretty much every single day uh, to monitor how it's getting on. Um, and once it's to a stage I'm happy with, the spicing is complete. Um, and when we were creating the recipe, um, I felt like we, we could do something more with it. So being a whiskey distillery, we have a lot of ex-bourbon casks. So the decision was made to fill all of the liquid into ex-bourbon casks and to be left um, for a couple of months. So I, I'd be doing daily, weekly checks on how it was doing. And after about two months part, two months of being in the casks, we felt it was it really mellowed out the spirit it gave it a chance to rest and it was a much more well-rounded complex rum and then we we get this and that is really the, the story of the recipe i think a lot of uh, people are saying that they're mixing it with lots of kind of citrusy juices and i think personally bandy tea is so complex and so spicy that it does it does work very very well with fruity kind of juices as well so i see a lot of people in the comments are experimenting so uh, it's great to see i mean there's a lovely picture of alex at the distillery outside with all the casks um i don't know if you i mean you've spoken about the casks so, um a small measure um <laughs> and again just that these were just visual aids, um, so some of the spicings, again, people are saying it's quite Christmassy. There's a lot of um, orangey and these kind of flavours, so um, yeah. Should think, we do a tasting? Yes, let's do a tasting, so if we can go to the next slides. You want to take this? <laughs> <laughs> it's written here, but yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, Bundy and ginger beer seems to be the natural serve. Obviously, people can like it with Coke or syrups or whatever you whatever you like so on the nose hopefully you're getting some I take this? <laughs> it's written here but yeah sure um so yeah i mean bundy and ginger beer seems to be the natural serve obviously people can like it with coke or syrups or whatever you whatever you like so on the nose hopefully you're getting some the tropical fruits so you're getting some of the pineapple coming through um and the spice um and you might get some of the stuff coming through from the cask as well so the vanillas and some of the maybe clovey cinnamon notes from the um, allspice as well. So on the palate, um, I'll have a little check here. <laughs> you really get the, the ginger anyway, especially with ginger beer. Um, the orange is quite prominent as well. Um, and flavors of your kind of roasted pineapple, anise, whatnot. Um, I think Bundy is quite a, lot, quite a long profile of a taste. You know, it's not like a short stop. It's quite a long flowing, which is what I, what I want from it. Um, so you're getting your kind of peppery finish as well and your cloves, your allspice and your fruit as well. So anything to add? Um, no, that's perfect. You had the nail on the head there. Um, I guess that's kind of uh, the bits that we were to say, but I don't know if Peter, you have any questions or anyone else has any other questions? No, I think it's worth um, saying. So, I mean, this this is a rum, for me, as a spice rum, this has got quite a, a, a powerful um, flavour profile. Do you think that's, um, I mean, and it also reflects very much the, the, the chap who put it together, perhaps, because, you know, you were making something that you enjoyed. But is this a style, you think this is a, a Glasgow style, or, a, you know, is there any, any further sort of inspiration to be drawn on this? And, and indeed, would you consider making other uh, other versions or variations? I, I don't know about Glasgow style, but certainly something I didn't mention before that I came into this not really being a rum fan per se. A lot of rum to me was a lot, it was really too sweet. And I one thing I did with this is that I didn't add any sugar. I think if you've got enough fruit in there, you don't really need to. I don't, I don't think there's much need for that. Um, and also because the casks are doing a lot of the work for me, 
adding colouring was a bit of a, you know, I don't feel like that's needed that either. Um, as for other products, there's about two other products I'm working on at the moment to be the next Bandit Pro uh, um, product. So maybe this year, maybe, once I get my finger out and finish it, um, <laughs> it'll, it'll be out. But yeah, there's, we've got three or four ideas mm -hmm. for further things. So there'll be, there'll be more children for the Bandit family. <laughs> I think with a lot of Glasgow Distillery Spirits, I think the common thing is that we are unashamedly quite, well, lots of our spirits are high strength and very uh, kind of stripped back. So our gin, for example, it's very juniper heavy, very kind of London dry style. Um, our whiskey is obviously our whiskey 46%, but um, the rum, I guess, yes, it's strong, but it's, it's authentic and we don't add any natural, you know, unnatural colourings and flavourings and that goes through like all of our spirits at Glasgow Distillery so we try to keep it um I guess we're not trying to add we're not trying to do I guess gin liqueurs or anything super sugary or and we had um, lots of sessions with some other rums out there and we found that they were very sugary and there was loads of vanilla added and it just wasn't really so we're not to, it's not to say that this is going to be for absolutely everyone it might not um but it will. It seems to have hit quite a lot of palettes in a really nice way um, on this chat. So, yeah, I, I, well, I think that's the, that's exactly the point. I think the category of rum is pretty diverse. Obviously, spice rum is a subset of you know. I mean, it shares that common base. But then, to be fair, I think also that spice rums are not necessarily you know you, you're not you're, you're you're catering to a demographic of people that, that that's what they're looking for you know and, and and so it's nice to be able to offer something different within that as well and and i tell you i, I certainly do take your point i've sit there i've tried a few sips on it it does i like the dryness on this it is very clove led in terms of profile mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's um it's complex and i love the idea of um choosing the madeira and uh, rum and anyone who kind of knows me from my flint and rum shack kind of uh, alter ego um it knows that I absolutely love agricole rum in general, and I'm a massive fan of Madeira. Uh, and it's one of those places that's just like completely off the um, off of most people's radars. So the fact that you're using it as a base is just wonderful. And I am, like, you know, what? I'm, I'm actually really intrigued to see. It'd, it'd be lovely for you to, you to do one of these, the same spicing, but on a maybe on a on a plain, almost overly clean rum, because it'd be interesting to see what that that Madeira agricole brings to it. It's difficult to to, to unpick it without you know. Like I say, so I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I think you've done very well. The um, um, uh, the ABV is also, I like that. It's, it's nice to have rums out there and spice rums that have a, a higher proof because obviously it does have an impact on the bottom line. I imagine revenue and customs like to to put a little bit of duty on, on that. So the higher it goes, the, it just adds to the price, doesn't it? But it, it, but it, yeah. it delivers. Yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot of back and forth in the distillery about whether or not we should have it at 40, 41, 42, higher than that. So um, it's funny because a lot of the distillers obviously like it um, <laughs> a lot higher than maybe yeah. some other people in the office. So I mean, I, I want <laughs> I want cask strength, but it wasn't happening. So for <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. So, do you, um, the, the cast. I mean, how many casts have you got? In here? Is that something you can tell us? Uh, maybe four batches so far. So we've got probably I don't know um, at least forty casks probably kicking about. So um, a lot of this will be probably used for things. The other things I'm doing at the moment. Um, so yeah, certainly enough already maturing for the next three or four batches. So. Mm. 